have an opportunity here to catch up with Nebraska Farm Bureau President Steve Nelson uh, after the weekend to get a clear picture of what's going on in Nebraska. And uh, Steve, I know that we're really not going to know the entire picture for a number of months uh, when all this is finally cleaned up and have some official numbers. But after this weekend, uh, after some spotty showers came in around the area, what's uh, what's the picture looking like so far? Well, as far as numbers go, it's still really early to uh, know specifics. And, you know, I continue to hear story after story after story of, of livestock losses, but we still don't have some, some good numbers as far as number of head. What we do know, though, is that, that there's some, some pretty reliable estimates that, that are still in that $400 million range of total li- loss to livestock. And, and so that's kind of the number that we have right now. And then probably in the four to $500 million uh, range would, would be losses that, that would be connected to fields that have flooded and the inability to, to uh, plant this year or to plant fields on time. So, so those are two big numbers out there. And then, then uh, and it, it sounds like a broken record, but another number in that four to $500 million that's tied to infrastructure losses, roads, bridges, those kinds of things. And as we traveled uh, into some of the uh, northeast, north central part of the state over the weekend, still just amazing uh, damage to roads and bridges that are out. So you, you're limited on, on uh, your ability to travel to certain areas or you have to go uh, a long ways around to get, get to where you need to go. So so the, the number probably hasn't changed since we talked before as far as estimates go, but, but still major, major numbers there. And, and as I've said before, that really does not, those numbers don't include property losses on farms uh, as far as like structures go, buildings, machinery, uh, grain bins. Uh, was it a place um, on Saturday where you know the the water had been about five foot high uh, in their in their yard area, and and uh, steel bins dented up from ice hitting the the bins and the and uh, bark off the trees about five foot off the ground, and and so just just really uh, some significant damage in certain areas. Steve, you mentioned you had the opportunity uh, this weekend to really visit some places impacted uh, by this situation. Can you tell us, um, are some are these producers, are your producers uh, getting some relief? Or are they getting some help? Well, you know, as always, you know, the, the first help that is there are, would be neighbors helping neighbors. And so, you know, there, there are neighbors who are on higher ground that have taken in cows and are feeding cows for people that were, were down closer to the streams or rivers. Uh, there's uh, many, many loads of hay going up into the area through our relief fund at Nebraska Farm Bureau. We've we've been sending hay up into the area, and, and there are a lot of loads of hay heading there, so that, that's something that's needed. So many of the, of the hay piles, hay yards were flooded, and so... Uh, either it, it washed the feed supply away or it, it's of little value because of the, all of the mud and water that washed in. So, so certainly that's, uh, that, there's needs uh, there that will continue for some time. Uh, there, I think that, you know, like the basic needs of water and food and those kinds of things are, are coming in, but, uh, you know, a lot of places still don't have enough water to, to you know, for showers or for washing clothes, there's a, there's a large area that that is served by a rural water district, and the the supply line to that was taken out by the flooding. And so, one of the things we're doing is is helping haul water in those areas to put water into those systems, so uh, people have have water uh, in their home to to do laundry, to take a shower, to water cattle, whatever it might be. So just you know, those are the kinds of needs that that are are quite immediate, and and uh, unfortunately, those those systems aren't going to be repaired in a short period of time. 
No, Steve, you hear about the, the massive amounts of water from this flood uh, and the saturated ground it's really causing and the chunks of ice that will be melting and creating issues as well. Uh, but were you able to see the issue of, uh, I've read reports of the large deposits of sand being the issue in these fields? Well, you see it everywhere we've, we, we were on Saturday and, and, and that even in areas that, that probably didn't have you know, that aren't the worst areas, there's still erosion that has taken place and, and moved soils around, and so that's going to affect, uh, the you know, how how timely planting takes place. And, and as you said, we're very, very wet here uh, in general, and then we keep getting showers, and, and uh, so there's no way to get to the field uh, or go to the field yet, and, and so a lot of work to be done. It, it is it starts to look pretty impossible in some cases that that certain fields at least would be planted. Now, Steve, I know a lot of the uh, time has been really focused on the flooding, but at the time, at the same time, uh, one end of the state received that bomb cyclone with the massive amounts of of rain. The other end of the state saw a blizzard. What have the impacts of that blizzard and the weather been uh, for producers on the western part of the state? Well, certainly some significant losses to baby calves. We we uh, are right in the heart of the calving season for many people, and and so uh, the significant calf loss and 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 that's really added to some pretty difficult calving conditions that we've had uh, for much of the winter. Uh, some loss to mother cows in those areas. I, I say that there's a greater loss to mother cows as you move downstream, but but uh, some pretty significant losses around uh, in the western part of the state as well. And, and, you know, we've maybe talked about this before, but it's, it's worth repeating. You know, we, and, I, and a lot of your listeners will know this, but, but economics are not great in agriculture to start with. We have tight margins in practically everything that we grow and produce in this part of the country. And so when you have a storm like this that creates, additional costs or 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 you know major losses that really really makes it tough for farmers and ranchers to to deal with how they might move forward and and so it's very concerning to me and and we know in nebraska at least that one in four jobs are connected to agriculture and when agriculture does well the state does well but when agriculture struggles so does our entire state. So just lots of concerns around uh, the overall farm economy and the economy of the state as well. And speaking of the economy, a time when farm, in- farm incomes are low, uh, property tax has been a very particular big issue uh, for producers in Nebraska. Steve, looking at the situation, uh, can you tell us of some resources that are available to producers uh, who may be in a tough situation or some other resources that uh, fellow producers from around the country uh, can utilize to assist in the situation? Yes. Yeah, so first of all, uh on the Nebraska Farm Bureau uh, website, that's at nefb.org, we've created an exchange portal there where those that have needs can list their needs, and people that want to help meet those needs can list uh, the things that they have to offer. So whether that's hay, uh, whether it is uh, machinery, labor, uh, whatever it might be that, that people want to contribute to the needs, we're working to get those those put together. We also have a donation portion of our website, and there uh, those uh, folks that want to contribute uh, can easily click on and make a financial contribution uh, to our disaster relief fund. Uh, every dollar that comes into that fund will be used to help people. Uh, the focus of our fund uh, are farmers, ranchers, and small rural communities, and so we, we continue to uh, to focus on that, and, and within that part of the web page, there is also a button to click on for those that have financial needs. They can click on there and and, and very uh, briefly list what their needs are, and, and uh, we'll work to to uh, help meet those needs. The the problem here, one of the problems or issues that we're dealing with, I that I think is important to note is that. There, there will be some good government programs uh, coming forward here. Many counties in the state have been uh, declared a, a, a federal disaster area. There's a couple different categories in within that, but 
but there will be federal assistance that comes, but most of that will be down the road sometime. And so there, there are needs that need to be met today, and that's really what we're working on uh, here at Nebraska Farm Bureau with our disaster relief fund is to try to meet some of these needs that, that are immediate that, that people have right now and, uh, and, and to try to get them to the point where they can access some of the, some of the federal programs. So we, we also, on the website, I should note, we do have a section there that has information related to disaster, resist, uh, disaster assistance, and, and we will continue to update that as we have uh, more information about what will be available to uh, producers in these areas. One more quick question, Steve, before I let you go here this morning. Um, as far as the mental health implications or if someone needs some psychological help, do you guys have some sort of crisis uh, hotline available to producers? Well, at, on the Nebraska Department of Agriculture website, there there is a, a crisis hotline there. Uh, that would be my suggestion as to uh, to where people would go to for for those kinds of needs. One, you know, it's a it's a very important uh, concern that you bring up here and and so what part of what we want to do is be sure that we're there in the community to help people to provide some of the the needs that they have to try to uh, alleviate some of the stress that we know people are under in these kinds of circumstances and even even uh, I mean we know that people were under stress prior to this because of the overall farm economy that we've talked about. So, you know, I would just say say uh, and encourage those that have needs, be sure and ask someone for help. I know we're proud people in agriculture and in this part of the country, and we're not used to asking for help. But this is this is a time when it's okay to ask for help. And, and, and just know that there are people that out there that want to help and and uh, ask for that help and, and uh I think that that uh, friends, neighbors, and Farm Bureau will work to to uh, do what we can to meet everyone's needs. All right, Nebraska Farm Bureau President Steve Nelson, we're keeping you and everybody impacted uh, by this natural disaster around the Midwest in our thoughts. Uh, thank you for taking the time to speak with us this morning, uh, and we'll check again uh, later on with you, Steve, as the situation becomes more and more clear for you guys. Again, thank you for taking the time to speak with us this morning. Thank you for having me on.